chapter 15, Blood Cultures, Arterial um, Intravenous, and Special Collection Procedures. Upon completion of this chapter, you will be able to list the steps in equipment and blood collection and blood culture collection, discuss the requirements for the glucose and lactose tolerance test, explain the special precautions and types of equipment needed to collect arterial blood, differentiate uh, cannulas, cannulas and fistulas, list the special requirements for collecting blood through intravenous catheters, differentiate therapeutic phlebotomy from autologous transfusions, describe the social precautions needed to collect blood and therapeutic drug monitoring, list the types of patient specimens that are needed for trace metal analysis, discuss the use of infrared light to locate veins, describe the use of ultrasounds for arterial venous blood vessel location, assessment and puncture, list the steps and equipment required for use of ultrasounds. Right. Blood cultures, collected from the patients who have who have fever of, un, of unknown origins. During the course of a bacterial infection, bacterium or septum may result. Blood cultures aid in identifying the, the specific bacterial organisms causing the infection and are used to target antibiotic therapy. Important difference in a blood culture procedure, healthcare workers must explain procedure in greater detail to patients. Puncture site must be decontaminated prior to collection to ensure uh, skin antisepsis. I um, believe if you all can recall, we talked about this earlier on. Whenever you're doing blood cultures, you're going to initially perform your 30 second scrub with alcohol on the site. And then after that, after you do your 30 second scrub, you will then do another scrub with chloroxidine um, to ensure that this site is clean and free of bacteria. Right. Important differences in blood culture procedures. Types of collection tubes used must contain culture media that enable bacteria to grow under laboratory conditions. Timing and number of blood cultures obtained must be clearly indicated. Possible interfering factors. Blood culture specimens must be uh, collected first. Um, do not scrape the needle across the skin. Blood culture collections through um, existing intravenous lines should be avoided. Fill anaerobic blood culture valve first, except for the butterfly assembly. All right, so again, we're not going. You don't definitely don't want to scrape the needle across the the site because. Um, that needle can pick up dead blood, uh, dead skin cells, um, and that can ultimately have an adverse effect on the on the sample. Um, while we we know that we can collect blood through the IV, um, it's a very it's a it's a lengthy process, a lengthy process to collect blood through the IV, um, and that is okay if we are given, if we are given permission to do so. That cannot be done with blood cultures because we're looking for, we need, um, we need good clean blood, all right. Um, and why and what makes a difference with the if you're using the the butterfly or wing infusion is because uh, naturally we use you're using a, a small a smaller needle needle and with that blood traveling through um, that tube 
um, is going is going to allow to us to get um, cleaner blood. All right? Possible interfering factors, cultures, um, bottles contain uh, pain with uh, reason bees that neutralize antibiotic in patient blood specimens. Sometimes two sets of blood cultures are ordered and venipuncture performed at different sites. Yeah, and that's just to ensure that we're getting a good clean draw, get the best the best sample possible so we can get the, we can provide the patient with the most accurate results possible. All right. Uh, since reflux into media uh, media collection bottles is a concern, it is recommended not to collect blood directly from the two holders needle assembly into the collection bottle. Blood should be collected through a butterfly attached to a tube holder or directly into a syringe. Okay, this is what I was what I was just saying. Site preparation for blood collection for blood culture collections. All right, the rationales to obtain a sterile puncture site because bacteria normally located on the skin can contaminate a blood culture if it is not properly clean before the venipuncture. Prepare and assemble supplies, identify patient properly, explain the test to the patient, wash or sanitize your hands with alcohol, uh, hand rinse and put on non-latex gloves. After applying the tourniquet, locate the vein. Loosen the tourniquet, scrub the site of venipuncture with 70% alcohol for 60 seconds. Scrub with axyl, uh, chlorhexidine uh, swab for 30 seconds. Initially place cleaning swab at site of needle insertion and then move inward to uh, move inward concentric circles in a diameter of two and a half inches. Right. And that's what it looks like. Again, you will start at the puncture site. You will scrub there for 30 seconds, and then as the after you do your after you have your 30 second scrub, then you'll start moving outward to move away any extra uh, dirt, debris, dead skin, things of that nature. It's what a claxidine uh, swab looks like. You would break one of these um, little tubes on the side, and once that is done, then the um, the cleaning application, the cleaning antiseptic that's in this tube, will be released, and it will fill this sponge up here while you're cleaning. That's what your blood culture bottle looks like. You know that. All right, safety syringe blood culture collection. Our rationale to perform a blood culture collection using a safety syringe for safety syringe, safety sterile syringe collection. It is recommended to do an endo collection of 10 milliliters and transfer the first 10 the first 10 milliliters to the anaerobic bottle and remaining 10 milliliters to the aerobic bottle at the site preparation as described earlier perform venipuncture and collect blood into safety safety sterile syringe after collection of blood into safety sterile syringe activate safety needle cover uh, aseptically dispose of needles into sharps container without touching needle Place a blunt tip cannula or connector on a syringe top and attach blunt tip connector to a direct draw holder adapter. 
Ain't that's what that looks like. And I've been trying to get some of these in the lab for quite some time. Um, just haven't been able to, just haven't been successful with doing so. I believe I kind of gave like a demonstration like once before on kind of what that would look like. Um, not too sure if that was the day class or the night class that I showed that to. Um, starting with the anaerobic microbiology bottle in an upright position. Place blood transfer device in bottle. Fill to desired amount. Remove syringe with blood transfer device from the bottle. Fill anaerobic bottle with after anaerobic bottle. Fill other uh, blood collection tubes according to the order of draw. Never push on a syringe plunger. A lab vacuum in microbiology, uh, microbiology bottles to pull blood into the bottles and tubes. And we know that we definitely don't, we don't want to do that um, because just like when we're using a syringe, if you pull back on the plunger too hard, you can call hemolysis. Um, so we definitely want to avoid that. The same thing, and we know we want to avoid that. The same thing applies when we're transferring the blood into a tube, um, forcing that blood out will rupture the cells. We know ultimately that will have a dramatic effect on the test results. If the amount of blood collected is only three, mill three milliliters or less, please uh, place entire amount in aerobic bottle. For infants and small children, only one to five milliliters of blood can usually be collected for blood co for bacterial culture. Excuse me. Use blood culture bottles designed specifically to for the pediatric patient. For infants and small children with difficult access, consider ultrasound guidance. Um, of a 24 gauge IV catheter to the vein, withdraw blood with a three milliliter syringe to prevent collapsing of the veins. All right, safety butterfly assembly, assembly blood co uh, culture collection. The rationale is to perform a blood culture collection using a safety butterfly, identify patient properly, explain Test to patient, wash or sanitize hands with the alcohol hand rinse, then put on gloves, prepare and assemble supplies, offer to answer any questions for the patient, place the tourniquet on the arm, locate the vein, loosen the tourniquet, disinfect uh, the rubber septum of the blood culture bottles with 70% isopropyl alcohol and allow it to dry. Scrub the site of the venipuncture with 70% isopropanol alcohol for 60 seconds and then scrub with the chlorhexidine uh, for at least 30 seconds. All right, so let me double back. I, I got thrown off. I said scrub with alcohol for the 30 seconds and that is not correct. I just moving too fast. Uh, this is the correct way. Alcohol for 30 seconds, then your chlorhexidine for... Alcohol for 60 seconds, chlorhexidine for 30 seconds. Well, I don't know why this... I'm stumbling over this so much. I apologize. We use chlorhexidine for infants older than two months old. Um, begin with chlorhexidine swab at the site of needle insertion. Move it outward in concentric circles to a diameter of two and a half inches. Alert patient before venipuncture. Reapply tourniquet, anchor vein, and smoothly insert needle. If implementing ultrasound, reapply tourniquet, apply ultrasound probe cover and uh, guide needle bevel up to the vein. Use a safety butterfly assembly for 
insertion of butterfly needles into venipuncture site for appropriate skin preparation. It can be helpful to place a strip of tape over the butterfly wing to keep the needle in place. Transfer blood to microbiology bottles via a direct draw adapter that fits directly over the blood culture bottles. All right, that's what that looks like. I transfer the blood to aerobic valve first. If only three, mill three milliliters or less of blood is collected, place the entire amount in the aerobic bottle. For infants and small children, only 1.1 to 5 milliliters of blood can usually be collected for bacterial culture. Use blood culture bottles designed specifically for pediatric patients for infants and small children with difficult access considering ultrasound guidance of a 24-gauge IV catheter to the vein. Withdraw blood with 3 milliliter syringe to prevent collapsing of the vein. All right, uh, evacuated tube system for blood culture collection. All right, the rationale to so form a blood culture collection using using an evacuated tube system after the initial site preparation. Steps are described early. It's steps are described early for venipuncture blood collection. Perform venipuncture by evacuated tube system. If implementing ultrasound, reapply tourniquet, apply ultrasound probe, cover and guide needle bevel up into the vein. After performing a venipuncture by evacuate tube system, collect blood into SPS tubes and then fill other tubes as required. And collecting blood directly into the blood culture bottle is not recommended because of the risk of reflux. Blood from the SPS tube can be transferred to the blood can be transferred to the blood culture media. All right. After blood culture collection, at, at patient's bedside, label tubes and or bottles and label each culture bottle or tube with site of specimen collection. This is what they mean is if uh, whatever bottles, because we know this, uh, that sometimes the two samples may be required, two sets of blood cultures. So if we're going to do one set on the left arm, we make sure we lab label both those bottles left arm. We did the other one in the right. Naturally, we will label it right arm. All right. Because again, we just want to make sure that we get the, the best sample possible. Ask patients to double check his or her name on labels if possible. All right. Document date and time of specimen tain and site of specimen collection. Discard safety needles. Evacuate the tube holders, needle assemble, assembly, or butterfly blood collection set in Sharps Biohazard Container. Discard blood soaked gauze pads, contaminated items and gowns or gloves used in the isolation room in appropriate biohazard waste container. Dispose of uh, gowns and gloves that are not from isolation rooms in appropriate containers. Wash or sanitize your hands. Thank patient for cooperating and depart with all specimens and all remaining supplies. Do not leave anything at patient's bedside. Deliver blood specimens immediately to the lab laboratory. Chloraxidine does not have to be clean from the skin at the venipuncture unless patient may be allergic, um, may have allergic reaction. Healthcare providers must initial, uh, must initial patient identification labels, indicate time and date of collection of tubes, indicate site of collection and attached label uh, to each vial or tube. Do not change needles after collecting tubes for cultures and it can be used and it can lead to a needle stick injury. Carefully skin cleansing plays a critical role in minimizing blood culture contamin uh, contamination. All right, GTT and uh, HbA1 for patients who have symptoms suggesting problems in a in carbohydrate or sugar metabolism, such as 
diabetes mellitus, the HbA1, as well as the glucose tolerance test can be effective, um, be an effective diagnos diagnostic tool. Excuse me. Uh, instructions for GTT, eat normal balanced meal for at least three days before the test. Fast for at least eight hours, drink water, do not drink unsweet tea, coffee, or any other beverage while fasting during this procedure. Do not smoke, chew tobacco, or chew gum, do not exercise even mildly during the test, be ambulatory, do not take the test if you have had an illness in the last two weeks. All right, all these things are important because we know all all these different things um, are controlled variables and they will have an adverse effect on the test. So that's why, again, that's why it's important to make sure that we know the procedure, like the back of our hand. This is why the questions are important, all right? Because maybe the patient forgot, notice, hey, just gonna have me a quick little late night snack. Whatever the case may be. So you ask them, hey, have you fasted? Does that in the third? And they tell you, uh, well, I had something to eat. Now, okay, so now we gotta we gotta push the test back. They may not like it, but hey, this is a. Uh, unfortunately, this is something they're gonna have to deal with because they chose to not follow the doctor's orders. All right, performing the test, obtain a fasting blood uh, a blood specimen. If the results is normal, then the patient can be given a standard uh, load of glucose. Obtain a subsequent blood and urine sample at intervals, usually during two to th during two to three hour period. Each specimen is then analyzed for glucose content. If fasting, if fasting specimen is abnormal, physicians must be notified before giving the load of glucose. In general, glucose levels should return to normal within two hours after ingestion of the glucose. Patients drink standard dose of glucose. Patient must uh, must start to fin must start and finish the drink within five minutes. Water intake occurs during the procedure. Um, and as you all know, like when, first off, you should never take medicine with anything other than water, right? Cause it's like 90% of the body is made up of water. So the body needs water to facilitate anything. All right, so the more water that you're putting in your body, um, when it comes to, to medication, um, the more the body will absorb it. Okay, the body needs that water to abs absorb absorb the minerals. Right? Uh, so I, if you're trying if you're trying to lose weight, one of the one of the biggest things that you're encouraged to do is drink water. Once your once your body absorbs that that water eventually it'll start flushing out that that fat right it'll burn it'll burn that fat or uh, now you have now your body's at a is more hydrated and it'll, it'll work better with burning the fat um so you'll be able to to slim down right water is the key all right um uh, performing a test when a patient finishes drinking the solution the time is noted and 30 to 60 to 120 to 120, uh, 180 minute specimens are obtained. Okay, so since what they're talking about here is once you have ingested the glucose, um, your level should return back to normal within two hours. So at these time intervals, these this is when we're going to, when the blood is going to be drawn to ensure that the levels are trending back down in the appropriate manner. After collection, send each specimen to laboratory for immediate testing. Venous blood is preferred is preferred specimen. If serum samples are collected, use the serum separator tubes. 
brake top tubes can be used for this procedure. Right. So, say if after 30 minutes you are in the red, you know, it means you're, uh, that you have diabetes. I don't know why it just took me so long to, to, to get that out. Um, so, say at the 60 minute mark, you're right here. Right? And then you just, you can just track it like all the way, all the way down to determine what your, what your levels mean. Right? Uh, possible interfering factors if the patient vomits at any point of the procedure. Physician should be notified immediately to determine whether the test should be continued or stopped. Right. Um, this glucose drink is, is not the best tasting thing on the planet. Don't really know like how to describe it. Um, essentially on a, on a normal day, under normal circumstances, I would have you all, those, this would be a lab assignment where we would all drink the, um, drink a load of glucose, um, and test out and test the levels. But, you know, hey, that's out of our control. So, um. For the mothers, maybe the mothers can give you a better, a better uh, example of what it tastes like. So feel free to ask. Um, postpartum uh, GT used to screen patients for diabetes. Day of the test, patients should ask for a breakfast of orange juice and cereal with sugar. Test uh, toast and milk to provide an approximately equivalent of 75 to 100 grams of glucose. Uh, the best cereal to use um, for this is Frosted Flakes. Right? Frosted Flakes have a they have a bunch of sugar, so it's going to make uh, getting the results and the test results back, uh, getting a better reading on the test. The blood specimen is taken two hours after the patient finishes eating breakfast. Glucose level is then determined. Patients can decide whether further carbohydrate metabolism tests um, are needed. Physician can determine. I said patient. I apologize. Uh, modify oral glucose test. A variation of postpartum Glucose test at the fasting glucose specimen is collected from patient. The patient is given 75 grams um, of glucose, and another blood specimen is collected after two hours after the patient has taken the glucose, encouraged water intake during this procedure. Um, lactose intolerance test. Um, difficulty in digesting lactose. Um, a sugar milk patient experiences uh, gastrointestinal dis discomfort followed by diarrhea after drinking a milk product. To diagnose after overnight fasting, 50 grams of flavored um, liquid containing lactose can be given to a patient to drink. Uh, Non-invasive non method measurements of both of breath um, hydrogen context breath samples collected as patient exhales. Inhaled gases analyzed by hydrogen measures the ability of persons intestine to digest to digest to digest lactose. Excuse me. It is used to diagnose a deficiency in intestinal lactose. 
Right. Now, uh, a weird thing. It's a little backstory. Uh, Some time back, I went straight vegan. It was just juicing, just eating fruits and vegetables and things of that nature. And I backtracked due to my work schedule and started eating meat and eventually I was back to pretty much just eating whatever it is that I wanted to eat. And I found out that I was lactose intolerant, which is crazy because prior to me going vegan, and I did that for a little over a year, I never had a problem. I went vegan for a year and tried to go back and my body was like, no, sir, this ain't it. That ain't it. Um, blood tested meds to give 50 grams of lactose to patient. Uh, venipuncture collection of a baseline specimen and 5, 10, 30, 60, 90, 120 minute specimens for plasma glucose levels. Um, this patient is intolerant to lactose. His or her blood glucose levels will increase by more than 20, 20 milligrams from fasting sample level. A bathroom needs to be located near the patient because the patients who are lactose intolerant may experience uh, severe discomfort during the testing. Uh, yeah, so anyone that is lactose intolerant, they generally have about 20 minutes after ingesting lactose before they need to retreat to a bathroom. We definitely want to make sure that that one is close by. All right, arterial blood gases provide useful information about respiratory status and acid-base balance of patients with uh, pulmonary lung disease or disorders. Our material blood rather than venous blood is used um, radio arterial puncture site located on the thumb side of the wrist. Right. Tree most uh, frequently used for blood collection for ABG analysis. Major arteries in the arm are or brachial ulnar and radial. All right, you see there, that's where they are filling on the brachial artery on the back side of the wrist, on the thumb side. All right, uh, brachial artery uh, puncture sites alternates uh, alternative site for blood collection for arterial blood gases, such as ABG analysis located in the cubital fossil of the, of the arm. All right. Let me see here in this chart this year, going back to, I believe it was like chapter six, and we did the, when that was when we studied A and P, uh, so your, your veins and your arteries here. All right, um, femoral artery site, the largest uh, artery used in ABG collection located in the groin area of the leg, uh, lateral to femur bone, uh, lacks collateral circulation used for patients with cardiovascular disorders. Um, last chance for, for arterial puncture. All right. So, uh, basically, when all else fails, we're gonna go to the artery in the leg, left leg, and Try to get the blood from there. All right. Um,
if this is what we, if this is the extent that you have to go to to get the blood for ABG, then you definitely know that something is is wrong. You are you bet your bottom dollar that there's uh And just plans put a, a cardiovascular cardiovascular problem. There's a blockage somewhere in the heart, and to determine where that blockage is, uh, you know, then you will break down break down the area of the heart in which you know. Remember, we divide the, the heart into four quadrants. Um, which area of the heart is responsible for pumping blood in this area? And Go from there.